بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس السلام علیکم آئی ایم یور ہوسٹ ڈاکٹر ناصر رحمان اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ایچ او ڈی علامہ اقبال اوپن یونیورسٹی اسلام آباد وی ہیو پریپیئرڈ اے برینڈ نیو سیریز آف پروگرامس فار دا کورس بزنس میتھمیٹکس وتھ کورس کوٹ فائیو فور زیرو فائیو اینڈ which is about the unit number 8. In this program, we will learn and discuss these topics. Number 1. Partial derivatives. Number 2. Maxima and minima for functions of multivariables. Number 3. Applications of partial derivatives. Dear students, first of all, we define partial derivatives with respect to x. At the point, x not y not the partial derivative of f of x y with respect to x is partial f by partial x equal to limit h goes to 0 f of x not plus h into y not minus f of x not y not divided by h provided that the limit exists Dear students, similarly, we can define the partial derivatives with respect to y. At the point x0, y0, the partial derivative of the function f of x, y with respect to y is given by partial f by partial y. And it is equal to limit h goes to 0, f of x0, y0 plus h minus f of x0, y0 divided by h provided that the limit exists. Now we look at an example. Find the values of partial f by partial x and partial f by partial y at the point 4, minus 5 if f of x, y is given by x square plus 3xy plus y minus 1. To find the partial f by partial x, we treat y as a constant and differentiate the given function with respect to variable x. That is, partial f by partial x is equal to partial by partial x of x square plus 3xy plus y minus 1. So we get 2x plus 3y because the other terms are in y and constant. So their partial derivative will be 0. Therefore, the value of partial f by partial x at the point 4 minus 5 is given by 2 into 4 plus 3 into minus 5 that is equal to minus 7. To find the partial f by partial y, now we treat x as a constant and differentiate the given function with respect to y. Dear students, we get partial f by partial y is equal to partial by partial y of x square plus 3xy plus y minus 1. That is, we get 3x plus 1. So, the value of partial f by partial y at 4 minus 5 is given by 3 into 4 plus 1, that is 13. Dear students, now we define local maximum and local minimum. Let f of xy be defined on the region R containing the point a b then first case f of a b is a local maximum value for f if f of a b is greater than or equal to f of x y for all domain points x y in an open disk centered at the point a b second case f of a b is the local minimum value of f if f of a b is less than or equal to f of x y for all the domain points x, y in an open disk centered at the point A, B. Now we see the second partial derivatives test. Let f be a function of two variables with continuous second order partial derivatives in some disk centered at the critical point x0, y0. And let d is equal to second order partial derivative with respect to x, that is f of x, x multiplied by the second partial derivative of y that is f of y y minus the pa first partial derivative with respect to x and second partial derivative with respect to y and its square that is f of x y square. 
Now we have the following four cases for the second partial derivative test. Number one, if d is positive and f of x, x is also positive, then f has a relative minimum value at the point x0, y0. Second case, if d is positive and f x x is negative, then the function f of x y has a relative maximum value at the point x naught y naught. Third case, if d is negative, then f has a saddle point at the point x naught y naught. And the fourth case is, if d is equal to zero, then no conclusion can be drawn. That is, we cannot apply this test to check the maximum and minimum value. Dear students, now we define critical and saddle points. First of all, we define critical point. We say that x is equal to c is a critical point for the function f of x if f of c exists and if either of the following conditions are true. Number one, f prime of c is equal to zero or f prime of c does not exist. That is, f prime of c becomes plus infinity or f prime of c becomes minus infinity. Second definition is saddle point. A point of a function which is stationary point having no extremum value is called a saddle point. Dear students, now we see an example. If f of x y is equal to 3 x square minus 2 x y plus y square minus 8 y, find the extremum of the function f of x, y. First of all, we calculate the partial derivatives with respect to x, f, x and the partial derivative with respect to y that is f, y. So, f, x is equal to 6 x minus 2 y. Similarly, f, y is equal to 2 y minus 2 x minus 8. Now, we calculate the critical points. The critical points of the function f of x, y satisfy the equation f x equal to 0 that is 6 x minus 2 y is equal to 0 and similarly putting f y equal to 0 we get 2 y minus 2 x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now solving the above equations for x and y we get x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6. Therefore, 2, 6 is our critical point. Dear students, now we will take the second order partial derivatives. So we get f x x is equal to 6, f y y is equal to 2 and f x y is equal to minus 2. Now the relative minimum value is given by d is equal to f x x multiplied by f y y minus f of x y square. So our point is 2 and 6. So putting the values of x0 is equal to 2 and y0 is equal to 6, we get fxx at 2, 6, fyy at 2, 6, minus fxy square at the point 2, 6. So we get the value 6, which is greater than 0. And the relative minimum value is given by f2, 6, that is equal to 3 into 2 square minus 2 into 2 into 6 plus 6 square minus 8 times 6. That is, we get f2, 6 is equal to minus 24. Therefore, f of x, y has a relative minimum value at the point 2, 6. And the minimum value is given by minus 24. Dear students, now we see another example. A rectangular box with no top and having a volume of 12 feet cube is to be constructed. The cost per square foot of the material to be used is $4 for the bottom, $3 for two of the opposite sides and $2 for the remaining pair of opposite sides. Find the dimensions of the box that will minimize the cost. Dear students, let x and y are the dimensions of the base and z by the altitude. Since there are two sides of area xz and two sides of area yz, the cost of the material is given by, we denote c by the cost function. So we get c is equal to 
फोर एक्स वाई प्लस थ्री टाइम्स टू एक्स जेड प्लस टू टाइम्स टू वाई जेड रिमेंबर दैट हियर एक्स वाई एंड जी आर नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी नो दैट वॉल्यूम इज गिवन बाई एक्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाई वाई मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जी एंड इट इज गिवन एज ट्वेल्व देयर फोर जेड इज इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व डिवाइडेड बाई एक्स वाई नाउ वी सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यू ऑफ जेड इन द गिवन इक्वेजन वी गेट सी इज इक्वल टू फोर एक्स वाई प्लस सेवेंटी टू ओवर वाई प्लस फोर्टी एट ओवर एक्स नाउ वी विल कैलकुलेट द एक्सट्रीमा ऑफ दिस फंक्शन एंड फॉर दिस पर्पज वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट सी एक्स एंड सी वाई दैट इज द पार्शल डेरीवेटिव ऑफ द कॉस्ट फंक्शन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स एंड द पार्शल डेरीवेटिव ऑफ द कॉस्ट फंक्शन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वेरिएबल वाई फर्स्ट वी गेट सी एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर वाई माइनस फोर्टी एट ओवर एक्स स्क्र एंड पुट इट इक्वल टू जीरो सिमिलरली वी कैलकुलेट द पार्शल डेरीवेटिव विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वाई दैट इज सी वाई एंड इट इज इक्वल टू फोर एक्स माइनस सेवेंटी टू ओवर वाई स्क्र एंड पुट इट इक्वल टू जीरो Dear students, now we solve these two equations, and we get that x square y is equal to twelve, and x y square is equal to eighteen. Now solving the first equation, x square is x, repeat. Now solving the first equation, x square y is equal to twelve yields that y is equal to twelve over x square. Now substituting the value of y in the second equation, which is x y square is equal to eighteen. we get 18 x cube is equal to 144 that is x is equal to 2 now we substitute x is equal to 2 in the other equation that is y is equal to 12 by x square so we get y is equal to 3 now using the value of x and y we can obtain the value of the third variable z that is z is given by 12 divided by x y now since x is 2 and y is 3 therefore we get z is equal to 2 dear students thus the minimum cost occurs if the dimensions of the base are 3 feet by 2 feet and the altitude is 2 feet the longer sides should be made of the 2 dollar material and the shorter sides of the 3 dollar material to keep the cost minimum Now we look at another example. Given the profit function p of x y equal to 140 x plus 200 y minus 4 x square plus 2 x y minus 12 y square minus 700, verify that maximum profit occurs at the point 2010. First of all, we calculate the first derivative of the given function. That is, we calculate p x and it is given by 140. Minus 8x plus 2y. Similarly, we calculate py, which is given by 200 plus 2x minus 24y. Now, at the point 2010, we see that the partial derivative with respect to x, px, is given by 140 minus 8 times 20 plus 2 times 10, and putting it equal to zero. Similarly, partial derivative with respect to y. P y is 200 plus 2 times 20 minus 20 times 10, and it is equal to zero. Since both the first order partial derivatives are zero at the given point, it is possible that maximum profit occurs at the point 2010. Now we have to verify this. For this purpose, we have to calculate the second partial derivatives, and we have to apply the second derivatives test. to evaluate them at the point 2010 dear students the second order partial derivative with respect to x is pxx and it is given by minus 8 similarly the second order partial derivative with respect to y is pyy and it is given by minus 24 now we will also calculate pxy and it is given by 2 now we know the formula for the d That is f x x at the point x not y not multiplied by f y y at the point x not y not minus f of x y square at the point x not y not. So using this formula, we get d is equal to minus eight multiplied by minus twenty four minus two square. That is two twenty. We know that if d 
is positive and f x x at x naught y naught is negative then f has a relative maximum value at the point x naught y naught. So in our case here d is equal to 220 which is positive and f x x at the point x naught y naught is p x x at the point 2010 which is equal to minus 8 which is negative therefore the maximum profit occurs at the point 2010. Dear students, we can also calculate the maximum profit and it is given by P2010 and putting the value of X is equal to 20 and Y is equal to 10 in the profit function we get that P2010 will be 1700. Dear students, that's all for today's program. We hope that now you would definitely have a better understanding of these topics. Next time we will come to you with the new program. For suggestions, questions and queries about this program, you are more than welcome to contact Department of Mathematics situated at block number 7, Alama Iqbal Open University, Main Campus, Islamabad. You can also contact us at 051-905-7191. Till then, goodbye and Allah Hafiz.